Hello and welcome to A Handmade Cottage and today we are going to make rosehip oil. We're going to borrow from Mother Nature, from her lovely beautiful hips. Um, these are on the trees now, it's November and it's a great time to pick them after the first frost because if you pick them before they're too hard and they're not at their best. So rosehip oil is a lovely facial oil. Um, it's in loads of anti-aging products and it's very expensive to buy but it's so easy to make and Ralphie shh, postman so not only is it a lovely thing to make for yourself at this time of year it's also great for gifts I mean what woman doesn't want a lovely anti-aging facial oil at Christmas so um, here's what we're going to do I'm going to make enough today just for myself okay so the things you're going to need are some rose hips some carrier oil. For this, I always use Yehoba. Fuchsia is a good brand. Um, you can use almond oil. That's really nice and gentle, not too heavy. I like Yehoba because it's quite similar to our own skin's oil, um, and it's quite good for people with oily skin as well. Have you used this? Um, no, I don't. Anyway, so you're going to need some rose hips, <laughs> <laughs> some Yehova, some essential oils, but to begin with, let's just make the basic oil. Um, you can use this on your body, on your face, for everything. Afterwards, I'm going to add some other little bits to make it a nice facial oil, put some essential oils in, so we'll do it together. So you want two part oil to one part rose hip. So if we have a cup of oil, we want half a cup of rose hips. So, first thing, get your rose hips and give them a bit of a bash. Um, you don't want to like squish them into a pulp, but you just want to break them up a bit so that all their goodness comes out quite easy. The other things you're going to need for this are a piece of it's a piece of muslin like this, because you're going to sieve the oil at the very end. You don't want to use a strainer because it because you'll still get all the little bits and any little insects that are lurking inside. But we don't want to think about the insects. Um, okay, so they've had a bit of a bash in. So let's chuck them in. No, let's leave them there for a minute. First thing, let's measure the oil. So I'm just going to pour all of mine into this cup. You can do it into a measuring jug. That probably wouldn't have been better. Okay. Right, so that's coming up to about here. So I need to put that many rose hips. It's not going to be that many for that oil, but I'm only making a small amount, so okay. Oil goes in. This doesn't have to be that accurate. Right. Rose hips. Then. So about there, in, job done. And that's it, pop it in the oven on the lowest heat possible. You don't want it to bubble, you just want it to simmer for as long as possible really, between four and eight hours. So the lowest heat for a longer time. Hello and we're back, it's the day after. I left my rose hip in the oven, the rose hip oil in the oven for four or five hours last night on my lowest heat, which is 50 degrees, and it turned out lovely. I didn't burn it. I got everything a bit oily, and hubby tells me off, but that's fine. So, what you want to do? Take it out of the oven once it's cooled down. I laid some my muslin cloth over the top of this and simply poured it through. Just let it drain through and then at the end give it a good squeeze really get as much out of it as you can and you're left with a lovely clear liquid looks a bit like wee anyway so there's our oil now now's for the fun stuff and you get to feel a bit witchy um here's my empty glass which i've already labeled with a pretty label so let's get our rosehip oil in there Mm, 
Okay, probably shouldn't do this on a lace tablecloth. Okay, so there's our oil. Now if you've got sensitive skin, or you know you react to things quite easily, I wouldn't add any essential oils to this if you haven't tried rosehip oil before as well. I'd keep it simple. So there's your rosehip oil. What I would still add is the vitamin E because vitamin E is not only lovely for your skin, it's also a natural preservative. So this will it'll really help this oil, you know, go the distance. It's the only thing when it comes to making things is that you don't have all the harsh chemicals that the companies do, which is a good thing, but you also don't have the preservatives. So um, you can buy the vitamin E capsules from any health shop. I stick about two, three capsules in there, just pin prick them, squeeze them in. Um, I've got the actual oil, so I'm just gonna, let's just get a bit of that in, if you just want that much. Nice noise, lovely. Okay. Yeah, so if you've got sensitive skin, maybe just leave it as that. Just give it a good shake, get your top on, pretty label and Bob's your uncle. Always remember to net label and date your products so you know when you made them. Now, if you want to go with the essential oils, that's lovely as well. Now, today I'm going to use lavender and rose for this because they're really nice. Anti-inflammatory, good for anti-aging, although the anti-aging star really is your rose hip here. The only thing is I lost my lavender oil and I don't know where it's gone. It was here. so. Let's pretend this is lavender and we're going to put 10 drops in. It's actually chamomile, which is lovely too. In fact, I might just put five drops in. Okay, so get 10 drops of lavender in there. Let's pretend that was 10. Okay, go. Now for the rose. I'm going to go 10 drops with the rose as well. I should really be using a different syringe. Do as I say, not do as I do. The rose is on the way out anyway, so it's allowed. Okay. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Lovely. Okay. Lid on and just give it a good shake. And there you have it, your lovely evening anti-aging rosehip oil with lavender and rose. Enjoy. <laughs>